the most courageous and heroic individuals are often the most loving. Garibaldi, Joseph Mazzini, and other modern-day heroes, Luther, who never dreaded man's face, and Gustavus Adolphus and William of Orange are all examples of this marriage of boldness and kindness. Bold as lions in the defense of the right, such men exhibit ladylike delicacy in their homes and private lives. There are no longer any tyrant barons, yet the spirit of tyranny and brutality may still be found. Today's good night belongs to him who helps the blind, deaf, stupid, and mad, who protects animals from cruelty, saves little children from abuse, and works to give working women their rights. He shields all of these victims from the false manliness that is cruel to the weak. It is always synonymous with the spirit of chivalry that inspired the good knights to go in quest of bandits, giants, and oppressive lords, those who mistreated the poor and deprived vulnerable women and orphans of their rights. Today's genuine knights are those who band together to prevent cruelty or to enforce laws against those who get folks intoxicated for a small fee. Today's giants and dragons are those who use their authority to abuse others who are at their mercy. False manliness is cold and harsh, cynical and disdainful whereas true manliness is gentle and kind. False manliness is unfeeling, lacking in friendly sentiments, unpleasant, gruff, and domineering. True manliness is temperate, it exercises self-control and is capable of self-denial and renunciation. False manliness is self-centered and indulgent. A misunderstanding of manliness drives youths astray. True manliness is compassionate. It states, we who are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. Its task is to protect those who are unable to defend themselves, to stand between the dictator and the slave, the oppressor and his victim.